I am traveling everywhere. I've been to a lot of places. I'm going to a lot of places. Um, overseas, I'll be in Tokyo next month. And I've seen a lot of things and I'm observing a lot of things. And the first thing that I observed, um, because I caught my Uber here, so we did an Uber black truck because I got my wife and I got my daughter and all of that, right, right. And uh, I went into JFK, so I think I flew into JFK, and then I took an Uber black here to the apartment, which is here in Hell's, like Hell's Kitchen area, uh, a stone's throw away from Manhattan, um, right in the middle of everything. I mean, literally a stone's throw away from Times Square, the whole nine yards, right? And my Uber ride was like $140. And then I tipped them $50, so it wound up coming to $190. And we went over to the 7-Eleven, and a bottle of water was just egregious, and I, it was out of control. And I seen, uh, and it was like 2, 3 in the morning, right? And then I seen the bus driver. He stopped the bus. He came over, and he went and got his stuff from 7-Eleven, and he went and got his little stuff. Um, you know, the little stuff like you're buying off the food truck, the 7-Eleven, a little grill or whatever. They went and got that. And then, you know, I was kicking it with the guy that pulled up in a Lamborghini and, you know, right outside. And he had the Urus. And then there was another guy that pulled up in a Huracan. And I was asking him why they even own cars in New York because it don't even make sense to drive. And we was having conversations, right? But the one thing that I did notice and I'm noticing this more often, not just in New York, not just in L.A., not just in Miami, not just in Tampa, but I'm noticing it in Detroit. I'm noticing it. Um, I was talking to some friends that's in Nashville. Uh, I got a friend that is in Atlanta I was talking to. And even in places like Las Vegas. There are no more regular people. And if there are, they're going away. Listen, I'm telling you, there is no middle class. Here in New York, it's the people that's going to be negotiating to buy a fake handbag on the side of the road. And it's the people that's going to be going inside of Gucci. If you go to a basketball game, it's the seats that they can sell that's going to be, you know, they got to get rid of the rest of the seats. And then it's going to be the people that sit on the floor. But there is like no middle anymore in anything. Either it costs you a whole lot to get to where you got to go. Or you can try to negotiate to try to just do, you know, catch a ride, hitch a ride. If you go out there and you living in, in Santa Monica or you out in Venice Beach or you in Newport. Either you got a roommate and you stand with seven other people or you living in a box, a shoe box. Or you just rich, rich out of this world. It's almost like. Because being on the ground and having conversations with everybody is, is real, is real. And the, and the tripped out part about it is like. Being a millionaire. Is the new middle class. Being a millionaire is the new middle class. When I walk around every day. Right. And y'all see my budget. You see my spending summary. I can pull it up for you right now. What I've spent this month personally don't have nothing to do with my business accounts. Don't have nothing to do with my personal, you know, um, the different businesses that I run, content creation, none of that. And I'll show you my spending summary for the month because I'm, I'm transparent and a lot of people think it'd be stunting, but it ain't stunting. It's just it's just my reality. And so if it makes you uncomfortable, then you can turn off the live stream and we can figure it out from there. But my spending summary, so, so far in July 2023, and this month I've spent $54,000. Let me, let me spin it around. Hold on. I got you. I got you. I got you. Hold on. Give me a second. So, so much, so far this month, I've spent $54,000, right? And the interesting thing about it is that so it's July 14th, spent 54 bands, and I don't feel nothing. Like, I don't feel like 
oh man, like life is extraordinary. Like my life is extraordinary. Don't get me wrong. But I don't feel like, like it moves the needle anymore from normalcy from when I was making, you know, $100,000 a year. You know what I'm saying? It's like 100000 then 20 years ago kind of feel like a million now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't feel like nothing. It don't, it's not a, a, a feeling like, oh my God, like, oh my, you know, I can go and buy. It don't, it don't resonate. It don't hit. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost like, I remember when we used to used to research a long time ago and used to say, okay, I want to go down, what is it, Fifth Avenue uh, shopping here in New York. And they used to call it Millionaire's Row, right? And that was where the millionaires stayed and everything like that. Now, you come to New York, they don't refer to nothing like millionaires. They It's called Billionaire's Row now. And it's like, yo, if you don't have a billion, then it's not going to be like you moving a needle. I'm not in a position yet to where I can take a uh, um, a private plane on a regular basis or I can go and buy my own plane yet. I get there. I'm on my way. But it just don't feel like nothing, right? It feels like when I'm out and about and I'm having conversations with people and I'm trying to give them the game and I'm helping them to understand how they need to level up. If I, if I see somebody and they say, well, Anton, I make $40,000 a year. And then they break down their lifestyle and I know that they can't put a dime into their retirement and they're going to be dependent on Social Security and they got all of these fucking student loans and, you know, they're trying to impress everybody else. It feels like poverty. It feels like poverty, right? You're better off never getting it. Hear me out. And we're going to get into the show. You're better off never getting it then getting it and then having to go back. It's just like relationships. And this is why we say body counts matter. Because now that she's experienced all of these other guys, now that Adam 22's wife has been blacked, you know what I'm saying? Been bust down. Adam 22 looked like he be on camera looking like he trying to figure it out, like he trying to keep it all together. He looks like he's trying to Cause you can't, uh, she can't unsee what she saw when she was walking around limping for the next couple of days, talking about she's sore. She's not gonna be able to unsee that. So can she really go back to what was normal prior to? You better off never seeing it. You better off never experiencing it than to experience it and then want to say, you know what, I want to go back to it. I think that that's why these NFL players and these NBA players. They have such a hard time transitioning into a regular life when that money stopped coming in, right? When they got to try to figure out how they can survive for the rest of their life off of what they have and try to maintain versus continuing to embrace what the lifestyle has afforded them or what they thought that the lifestyle had afforded them for that, for that small period of time. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. And I'm telling you, look, man, we used to think that our house size was normal when we was growing up. What I'm telling you is that when you drive back through the hood and you see the house that you was raised in, you'd be thinking to yourself, how did we survive in that? How was there so many people in that house? It seemed normal until you got out of it. And then it's like, what the hell is this? So all I'm saying to y'all is take inventory of what you have. Make the adjustment right now. Because unfortunately, I don't have a swan song for you. I don't have a story where I can tell you, oh, well, everything is going to be okay. I don't. What I'm going to tell you is that the people that's preaching to you, hey, it's okay for you to make $50,000 a year and you can survive off of that. They lying to you, bro. They're lying to you. Your children are going to need student loans in order for them to be able to survive. You're going to have to depend on Social Security, which is not guaranteed to be there when you get older. You're not going to have enough money to be able to put up for retirement. You're not going to be able to travel and do the things that you want to do. You can't raise a family of four and five people. I had a coaching call. Somebody said I wanted 10 children, but then I had to pare that down to one because I realized that 
it just wasn't feasible for me to be able to survive or for me and my wife to be able to survive and have one kid when I just got laid off from my job. And there's no bigger example of it than when you go to these major cities. You go to the New Yorks, you go to the Dubais, you go to the L.A.s, and it's a whole lot. If you go to Miami, the people that are native to Miami is not the ones that's out here having fun. Unless you're a millionaire or unless you really get into the bag. Those people are spending day and night, day and night, suffering, surviving, literally working every day just to be able to make ends meet. They not at the beach. They not at the clubs. They not partying. They not having a good time. They not ordering DoorDash every day. They not taking Ubers and then being able to sleep. They not out here running it up and busting it down. They not doing none of that. They are in survival mode. And they are one to two paychecks away from losing. That's why van life took off. That whole van life movement, man, them people is uncomfortable, cramped, it be cold at night. They be worried somebody is going to steal their house. It's hard. It's hard, bro. And I'm telling you, I feel for it. And this is why I do what I do on a, on a daily basis as far as trying to pour into y'all. Because I done been on both sides multiple times. And it's better on this side than it is on that side. And so ain't, ain't nothing going to change, bro. It's going to get more exaggerated. There's going to be a bigger divide between the haves and the have-nots. And so while y'all so distracted talking about black rights and all of this stuff, it's real. It's literally real. I had a conversation on my de on my delayed flight yesterday with a guy that said that his buddy worked for BlackRock. And we was talking about the watches and the Rolexes and stuff like that. And he was like, yo, Anton, I'm looking to get out of New York because I can't afford to be here anymore. And this guy was a 28-year-old millionaire. Because we was breaking down the difference between the housing markets and stuff like that. So neither here nor there. Make sure y'all hit a like for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications.